Prime Minister Theresa May has gambled significant political capital to win over the opposition and break the Brexit stalemate in Parliament. So far, it hasn't paid off. Well, at the moment, we're waiting to see what the government is putting on the table as a proposal. Uh, all they've done so far is is to indicate various things but not to change the political declaration. So uh, the ball's in the government's court. We need to see what they come back with. Um, and when we do, we will take a collective position on that. May has failed three times to get the support of the ruling coalition of Conservatives and pro-Brexit Irish MPs. So she's turned to the opposition Labour Party to break the impasse. Now, there's lots of things on which I disagree with the Labour Party on policy issues. But on Brexit, I think there are some things we agree on. Ending free movement, ensuring we leave with a good deal, protecting jobs, protecting security. The UK is currently scheduled to leave the EU without a deal on April the 12th. May wants a short extension to accommodate the cross-party talks. But EU leaders say she needs to show them a clear plan forward. The, Britain haven't the British turned a deal into a no deal. And now they want to turn the no deal into a deal again. It's like with toothpaste. You get it out of the tube very easily, but getting it back in is very hard. Ahead of an EU summit on Wednesday, May will meet with French President Emmanuel Macron and German Chancellor Angela Merkel to sell her plan for a further delay. The chances of their buy-in will improve if May's talks with the opposition produce a winning hand. Paolo Montesilio. TRT World. And for more on the story now, let's welcome Geraint Johns back to the program. He's an economics professor at Lancaster University in the UK. Good to have you back, Geraint. So government and Labour officials are holding further talks about a possible Brexit compromise uh, later tonight after they appeared to stall on Friday. What could Theresa May possibly offer uh, the Labour Party that might strike a deal? There isn't an awful lot of distance, Oscar, between the Conservative position, or at least Mrs May's position, and that of the Labour opposition. Both of them are keen to have some kind of customs arrangement, and that indeed is written into the political declaration, which is, of course, part of the package alongside the withdrawal agreement that she has been trying to get through Parliament so far unsuccessfully on three occasions. But a customs arrangement is couched in such words that it's been possible for Theresa May to sell this to different people in different ways. So when she's been addressing the hard Brexiters in the European Research Group in her own party, she has been trying to tell them that this is a loose arrangement that would nonetheless allow the UK to strike its own independent trade deals after it leaves the EU. However, we know that the customs arrangement that's envisaged is very close to the backstop that has been so controversial in talking about the Irish border, and that that itself is a de facto customs union. So the distance between Mrs May and Mr Corbyn on this particular issue is very slight. She's been disingenuous, I suppose, in talking to the European Research Group. They haven't fallen for it, but she's ended up with something that she's finding difficult to sell to Mr Corbyn because it's not the customs union that he is after. He's after something that's a little bit tighter. Interesting. Uh, you've kind of alluded to my next question because uh, any compromise that uh, she does manage to reach with uh, the Labour opposition party is likely to sideline uh, the uh, more hardcore Brexiters within her own party. Do you think she's prepared to do that? She's playing the numbers game and she's reached a point where she can no longer afford to put her own party's interests first. She has now to put the country's interests first. And that means playing the numbers game and getting enough Labour members of Parliament to support the withdrawal agreement and political declaration as that goes through. But that's only one of the possibilities. Uh, we know that she has asked for a further extension. The European Union may or may not deliver that extension. If it does, then the likelihood is it will be a long extension. That in turn would require uh, that the UK participate in the European elections uh, that are coming up in May. Uh, also, if the European Union doesn't grant that extension, then come the end of this week, the UK is going to have to choose between no deal, which would be 
quite disastrous economically uh, on the one hand, or no Brexit, revoking Article 50. OK, let's look at uh, the issue of this short extension. As you say, some within the European Union uh, have hinted that perhaps they may grant an extension of up to a year, which would seriously anger a lot of people in Theresa May's party. But Theresa May herself wants a short delay of a few months till June the 30th. She's going to Germany and France hoping to convince uh, those countries' leaders to back her proposal ahead of the Wednesday summit in Brussels. Do you think she'll be successful in doing that? I think the likelihood is very much that it would be a longer extension that the European Union offers, if it does offer an extension at all. And the problem here really is the elections to the European Parliament. If Mrs May pushes for an extension just until the end of June, then it would not be possible to have any further extensions beyond that, because the UK wouldn't have any members of the European Parliament. Interesting times ahead. Well, not long to go until this emergency summit in Brussels on Wednesday. Geraint Johns, thank you as always for your thoughts. Far too interesting. You're